All right, what you're looking at here is this is a ratiometric Hall effect sensor. This is a amplifier, a differential amplifier to make up for the problem of 2.5 volts coming out of the uh, Hall sensor with no input. As it's connected now with no input, it's only putting the uh, op amp, it's an LM358, only puts out about 0.6 volts, not 2.5. And, and over the range, it, ha it goes from about a half a volt to 3.8 volts. And that's limited by the 5 volt supply that the LM358 uses. We'll go over the schematic and how it works momentarily. Let's pull back. Nope. Let's pull back. And over here you'll find the output of the amplifier goes to the analog input of a PIC um, 12F683 microcontroller. It will do the same thing on Arduino if you hooked it up. So the idea is when I take these magnets and vary the output voltage out of the uh, hall sensor, the amplifier will give me the 0.6 to 3.8 volts, which goes to the analog, the digital converter input of the PIC, which um, sets the output of the pulse width modulation. And this high and this high level switch over here will control the intensity on the 12 volt light. So let's just cut it on, power it up. Okay, you see a little bit of the light there. Here's the magnet. It'll either go down or come up. I could pretty well cut it off. It drives it near zero. Let's shoot it through the roof. So that gives you a visual indication of the amplification of the amplifier. <coughs> and so let's, it's a very simple circuit. We'll take a closer look. Here is a block diagram of your very basic ratiometric hall sensor. It has a hall element, it has some type of amplifier, and it has an output stage. The important things to note with a unipolar device, that is, it has a single supply, such as VS, also commonly called VCC, is the output with no magnetic field on the Hall element at all is going to be one half of VCC. We'll see more on that in a moment. Here's another basic diagram of a ratiometric Hall sensor. Like the other, it has a hall plate, an amplifier, and an output stage, but it has an internal voltage regulator, probably so it can be operated at a higher voltage, such as 12 volts, instead of 5, like the previous amplifier. Let's review again what hall sensors actually do. In this case, here is the face pr printed side of your hall sensor, here is your south pole of your magnet, and it's held away from the Hall sensor. It's a, I'm using a TL173C in this case. I have several of those. And with no magnetic field input, my voltage at test point 1 is going to be 6 volts. As the south side of the magnet approaches the face, the voltage will begin to rise to greater than 6 volts, um, somewhere up near 12, which is VCC. So the thing to remember as the south pole comes to the printed face, the voltage at test point 2 is going to be greater than 6 volts, but it will be less than VCC, the 12 volts, just because the properties of semiconductors will not allow it to reach fully to VCC. On the other side of the coin, if I approach the face of the Hall sensor with the negative, uh, excuse me, north pole of the magnet, 
the voltage will be dropping below 6 volts or will be less than 6 volts. It will probably, it will never go to zero. It'll probably be somewhere between, probably 0.8 volts is about as low as it's going to go. So keep these three things in mind. Um, no magnetic field input. The output is going to be half VCC. As I approach the face with the south pole, it will rise above half of VCC. That is, in this case, greater than 6. And as I approach with the north pole, it will drop below half of VCC or lower than 6. One very popular ratiometric hall sensor is the ACS712. You pro I've used this module on my um, solar charge controller to monitor current. They're widely available from several vendors on eBay and probably SparkFun and other people. It too is a ratiometric hall sensor, what that is with no current flow through the terminals over here is going to read about 2.55 volts, at least that's what I measure on it. Um, while it does work, to me it suffers from low sensitivity and narrow range. So let's work on getting rid of this problem and what we're going to do applies to all hall sensors. Because all hall sensors start basically as a ratio metric, even if it's a switch or a latch, or etc. Alright, in the video you saw me bring a magnet up to the hall sensor and I could really swing a broad uh, voltage swing to control the pulse width modulation on a pick in order to change intensity, light intensity on an LED lamp. The first thing we got to do is get around this problem of output at 2.55 volts. If I have a sensor that only goes to 5, that doesn't give me very far to go from 2.55 to what? Maybe 4.7 if I'm lucky. There is a solution. The LM358 op amp is a true differential amplifier. A, what a differential amplifier does is the input voltage on pin 2, the negative or inverting input, is subtracted from pin 3, the non-inverting input. The gain is controlled by the input resistance dividing into 100K. So what this means in reality as it, as it sits now is I get a gain of about 2x. So what I've got now where I adjust this pot for uh, about 2.6 volts on the inverting input is I now have a range from 0 to 3.8 volts. Won't go above 3.8 volts unless I go to a higher voltage like probably 6. It's just one of the properties of the internal construction of the LM358. Nonetheless, that is a heck of a good range, 0 to 3.8 volts, that we can apply directly to an Arduino analog to digital converter. Then all you got to do is calibrate magnetic field to uh, intensity and log it in and measure it as a voltage. Looking at what we have here, these are three pin um, hall effect switches. If you notice the north pole here, it's going to be off. On the right side with the south pole, it switches on. Again, internally, even hall effect switches start out as a ratio metric hall sensor. Let's look at the internal diagram of a basic hall effect switch. Here's a diagram of one of them that I use. It's an old obsolete UGN 3013T hall switch and it operates from 4.5 to 24 volts. And how does it do that? Well it has a voltage regulator. Probably regulates everything down here to 5 volts. It consists of the hall plate, consists of an amp, 
the voltage amp. Now, the reason you need an amplifier with a hall plate is it works in the millivolts. It's really small, so I have to have a fairly high gain amp to get the voltage up to something I can use. The output from the amp in this case is sent to a Smith trigger. A Smith trigger is often used to clean up and produce a square wave. Uh, it's, a, it's an inexpensive way to go from an analog voltage to a uh, digital voltage. The output of the Smith trigger feeds an open collector transistor. What I mean by open collector is there's nothing collected connected to the bipolar transistor's collector and all of it ties to a common ground. When a magnet approaches the hall plate, the voltage is amplified by the amplifier it switch uh, the uh, Smith trigger will switch on the transistor and whatever load you've got out here will be shunted to ground. It acts as a switch. Here is my earlier circuit. Um, here's the hall sensor. There is my LM358. But what I've done now is add an LM311 comparator to the circuit. Um, it's, it's an adjustable version, you could say, of a Smith trigger. It also has an open collector output. Uh, I have to use this resistor to pull it up to 5 volts, and I can connect it right to a digital pin on an Arduino or PIC. And I can pick out the trip point, and if I adjust back here, this 10K back at the LM358, I can also adjust the sensitivity. So I have a sensitivity adjust, and I have a trip point adjust, besides going from 0 to 3.8 volts. Next frame. this case, I'm using a 12-volt TL173C. The LM311 and 358 both work fine at 12 volts, as does U2. But I still use the open collector output of the LM311 tied to 5 volts to tie it to a processor. I cannot apply 12 volts to the input of an Arduino or you will be buying a new one. So we have, this is basically an adjustable, um, it, what we got here is a 12 volt Hall effect switch that we can adjust for sensitivity and we can also adjust the uh, trip point for the comparator. What does the comparator do? Um, if you look closely, we have a pot connected to, that's adjusted, that's test point 3, connected to the uh, non-inverting input. If the voltage on pin 3, the inverting input is greater than uh, the voltage on pin 2, that is test point 2, is greater than 3. This will cut on, go to ground, and I will get a low output. Here's another variation. I can take the output that you found back here, coming off of test point 4, from the LM311 pin 7, and I can send it to a JK flip-flop. What does a JK flip-flop to do? Um, as wired here, every time I have an on-off cycle from the LM311 where I move the magnet forward and away from it, I will toggle the state of LED1 and LED2 that's on the Q and Q0 outputs. Uh, magnet goes, it, it can do this. I can just toggle the output back and forth. This is what we would call a Hall Effect Latch. That's how it works. Alright, that completes the internal um, workings of our Hall sensors. To reiterate, everything starts out as a ratio metric. And then we add in Smith triggers, comparators, and flip-flops to produce switches and latches. Thanks for watching the video, and watch my earlier video 
on uh, hall sensors as well. Thanks for listening.